Welcome to another episode of the Blues Heart Biker. Well, all right, everybody. Welcome to the Blues Heart Biker channel. Yeah, well, I'm driving my car today. Um, I know I always say that Central Valley, the weather is good all year, you know, to ride your bike. And it pretty much is, but it's kind of cold today. And I know some of you may laugh at what what I'm saying is cold. It's 45 degrees today. <laughs> and it's early in the morning here. Not early, but it's 9.30 in the morning. And uh, I just don't feel like going out in 45 degree weather and riding my bike. Um, but so I'm driving the car and I'm going over to see a friend of mine about his bike. Um, I haven't done one of these in a while where I've gone over and talked to my friend about his bike, but uh, this one's a, an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to go over and see Mike today, and Mike has a Honda CB160 Cafe Racer. It's a really sharp bike. Uh, and, you know, some of you are saying uh, Honda 160, that's no big deal. But the thing is, is that the Honda 160... Uh, has become, particularly in the Northwest, it's become a real, almost a famous um, race bike for flat tracks, you know, um, you know, TT racing, flat tracks and stuff like that. And uh, they, I, back in the 90s, uh, from what I understand, I don't know the story that well, but from what I've gathered, just here and here and there, um, you know, the 250 class was getting kind of expensive so some guys went out and got some Honda 160s which were um, which were cheap and so they found these 160s to be pretty beefy and they uh, started using these 160s and they were cheap you know there's there were a lot of 160s around at the time that's not so now because they're all been chopped up and made racer bikes out of them I was at Laguna Seca earlier this year, and I did an episode about it, and they were racing 160s. It's, it's a it's a class, a 160 class. And, uh, you know, they're really cool little bikes. I have a special affinity for the Honda 160 because it's the first motorcycle that I ever rode. Uh, my father bought one for his service business, and he'd ride it around and do, you know, little service calls. Uh, and uh, when I was about, oh, 10 or 11, one time he, he put me in the front and taught me how to work the gear shift and all of a sudden I feel him kind of push off the back and he slipped off the back and away I went and uh, from that moment onward it was uh, motorcycles are cool <laughs> and I got to where within a couple of weeks I was taking it out by myself without having to ask him you know so uh, and I always loved that old bike they were pretty cool bikes, you know, they were a twin cylinder, they had hemi pistons, two valves per cylinder, you know, just a basic cool four-stroke two-cylinder motor, a uh, small bore, of course, because it was only 160 cc's, and they could go about 65, 70 miles an hour, probably, you know, um, so pretty cool thing, and this guy's bike is really sharp, it's really, really, uh, um, you know, a lot of attention to detail on a cafe racer so let's go check it out and uh, before we do uh, don't forget to subscribe hit the subscribe button for me also give me the thumbs up and hit the bell the bell lets you know when I upload new stuff okay <laughs> All right, this first sticker trade today, I've got two of them to do, so today's a double whammy. Uh, it's from HD Vibe, all right? And he sent me a couple of really cool stickers here. Um, one of them's white and black, one of them's black and white, and they're really classy, old school looking stickers with a with an Evo motor right in the center. Um, very cool, thanks a lot. His name's Rick. Sent me this nice letter as well, and close, find a couple copies of my HD Vibe stickers. Thanks so much for supporting the channel, and I look forward to seeing both of our channels continue to grow. Thanks, ride safe. All right, Rick, thank you, man. And uh, Rick's channel is HD Vibe, 
all one word. And he's got a really, really cool channel. Uh, he's also got an Instagram uh, page. And check him out on Instagram and on YouTube. He lives in Missouri. He's got a 2015 Street Glide Special and a 2019 Road King Special. So, um, you know, he's got some cool bikes going. And he does, you know, he's got a motovlog channel where he does some riding and uh, reviews and, you know, works on his bike and stuff like that. You know, same kind of thing that I do. So I'm sure you're going to like his cool channel. Check it out. I, I, I subscribe and you should subscribe too. So tell him the Blues Heart Biker sent you. All right, next on the list is Kraken's Garage and Adventures. Uh, he sent me a few stickers here, really cool stickers, different different sizes and a uh, window sticker. And uh, sent it in this nice letter with one of those wax stamps on the back. I didn't tear it open because I wanted to cut it open from the side I wanted to keep it. So I got to upgrade my game on this, man. I my my uh, sticker trades. I I just send out some stickers and one of my cards, and and uh, I'm still working on that. So, uh, anyways, um, his name is Eric, and he gave me a really good shout out on my channel on his channel. Um, he does shout outs on his channel and and describes people's channels and su makes suggestions on who to subscribe to. And I got some subscribers from his from his shout out, so thank you. And uh, he sent me a nice letter here too that says, "Keep up the great work on your channel. You've come a very long way in such a short period of time. I think." It speaks volumes for the quality of your content. Well, I hope I got good content, so I'm going to continue to try. Thanks a lot. He does uh, motor vlogs and shout outs, and uh, he's got a few bikes. Um, he's quite a biker, actually. Uh, he's got a 2021 Harley Davidson Icon Revival, and then he's got a 2019 Harley Davidson Roadster, and he's got a 2020 Benelli TNT 135 and a 2014 Vespa. So anyways, subscribe to his channel. Tell him the Blues Heart Biker sent you. Um, it's Kraken's Garage and Adventures. So anyways, thank you very much, Kraken's Garage and Adventures. And thank you. I got to thank you especially for the big shout out you gave me on your channel. That was awesome. And also HD Vibe. Thank you, HD Vibe. HD Vibe, we, uh, we talk on Instagram quite a bit and uh, he's a cool guy and uh, check his channel out as well. All right, well, that's gonna do it for a Sticker Trade shout out today. Let's get back to the show. Uh, and if you wanna get involved in the Sticker Trade, my address is down below. All right, well, let's go. I'm gonna drive on over to see Mike now and uh, we're almost at his place. And let's go check out that Honda CB160 Cafe Racer. All right, let's do it. All right, we're here with Mike today. Mike, say hi to everybody. Hello. And uh, Mike, this is the bike that we're here to see, although we're going to look at all of those too, I think, as well. But this is the one in question right here, and this is a CB160. What year is this? 60? 1965. 65, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did you acquire this bike? So it was, there was this uh, guy in LA, and he. He's been making cafe racers, and this was my introduction to the cafe racer. Mm -hmm. I've always seen them in magazines. Yeah, but um, I was kind of hesitant because you might end up wrenching than riding. Yeah, right. So um, I'm not so good with the wrench, so to speak. I'm more of a collector, as you can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I do a little bit of. Uh, stuff here and there, just maintenance, and uh, I can't diagnose for the life of me. Yeah, um, that's why we have friends, right? That's it. That's it. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so when I got this, to be quite honest, it was already put together. Oh, okay. And uh, there's not much romance in that, I guess. There's yeah. Not much story to it, other than the fact that um, when it came to me, I have very little understanding of the whole cafe racer retro uh -huh. scene um, there were a few things which I did to make it more roadworthy mm -hmm. so to speak mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, it didn't come with uh, the tail light mm -hmm. it didn't come with these uh, 
uh, brake lights. And that brake light is pretty cool. It's one of those. Yeah. Stuck. Yeah. And yeah. it had the original, how do you say them? Keen? Keen carburetors. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I replaced it with a more uh, up to date version. Yeah. And those are pretty reliable. Yeah, yeah, those are good carburetors. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. And the thing about this is it's a 1965 and it's still running to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these bikes were bulletproof, you know. They're, yeah, they are. They really are. It mm -hmm. leaks a bit. Yeah. But uh, you can expect that from. The, any old bike's any gonna old leak. Bike, right? I've heard if they if they're leaking, it means they got oil in them. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I tried to keep it as uh, stock as much as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like the stock tank being on it. The stock tank, the stock uh, rims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. stock drum brakes. Drum brakes. There you go. Yeah. They're not the most um, safe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bikes, but thank God it's small yeah. and manageable. Yeah. So you have to really stop way ahead of yeah. what, if you would normally ride a modern bike. And a lot of downshifting. A lot of downshifting. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, it's loud and drivers can hear you. Yeah. Because yeah. these are straight pipes. Sure. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard, to, hard to miss that sound. If you're driving down the street, yeah. Wow, that's a, this thing sure is cool, man. I mean, it's just it is, and there's there are different uh, iterations of this type of bike. Yeah, and I think you can buy a kit for it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, was troublesome was the brake, uh, where. Normally it would be set right, right. further out here. Right. So to turn it into a cafe bike, you have to push it back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had center controls on them. There you go. Yeah, yeah. What's it sound like? Will it start? Oh, sure, sure. Wow, that sounds great. It is. How long have you had it? Ten years. Ten years, yeah, yeah. More or less. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's. I don't ride it as often. Yeah. Uh, but often enough to where uh, you have to maintain it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Because if you don't ride bikes, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what? How fast does it go? About 60, 65? Oh, I think I pushed it to. Um, 80? 80, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, I would imagine it probably... I don't think uh, they were made to go that fast. Yeah. No. <laughs> I just push it, just try to yeah. figure out if it can. Yeah. Uh, but it was on a straightaway. Yeah. 
Well, what do we got over here? Man, you got some stuff over here. Of course, the first thing I'm eyeing is this big red airhead over here. Yeah, that's this is a 1968 BMW um, R69S. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and it you know it it runs. Yeah. Uh, those are well-designed machines. Oh yeah. And I I just love them to death. How long have you had this? Oh, this one I have to say about. Eight years. Yeah. yeah, I got it from a guy uh, in LA. Yeah, he wanted to get rid of it because he needed to get a, a GS. Oh, okay. A -W mm -hmm. GS. Well, I guess that. I guess the GS is probably going to be a little more reliable. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah, well. And this one is the R9. The newest uh, retro bike that BMW came up with. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of them? The R9 T racer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's it handles pretty well. Yeah. But I like how they give you that little nudge when you you're sitting at a stop sign and you rev it up. Yeah, the shimmy, right? <laughs> uh, but you're you're so stretched out. Yeah. At least I am. Yeah. Uh, after, I guess after about an hour. Yeah. Uh, you have to stop and stretch your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how my Triumph is. You know. Well, well, you've got one too. You know. And and. Uh, oh, do we have the same bike? I don't have a Truxton. I've got a Bonville that's been um, that's cafe racered out. Well, this is a twelve hundred. Yes. Yeah. Mine's a mine. Mine was a a, a nine hundred, but it was the eight sixty. Three or whatever, uh -huh. and I got bored out to a a, a nine oh four. Did you do it yourself? I didn't do it? it. I didn't do it. No, no, I had. I bought it that way. A friend okay. of mine, friend of mine, did okay. it. Yeah, it's a nineteen seventy four Vespa Primavera. It's the small yeah. frame, mm -hmm. and uh, the carbs have been upgraded. These are thirty two, mm -hmm. and they're. This one, at least, this one is pretty fast. Yeah, these were pretty quick, zippy little things, you know. They're, mm -hmm. they're and they're fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, yeah. That, is the transmission automatic in it? No, no. No, you shift, you shift it's, it, yeah. It's, it has to be. I've never ridden one, so I don't know if, if you know. So much it's, about a, it's a 125. 125, yeah. But with the light frame. Yeah. Uh, you can keep up, keep up with modern day traffic. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the people used to ride them, you know. Mm -hmm. How about the small wheels? How do those handle like when you're going 50? Is it the same as a motorcycle or does it seem a little weird? Twitchy. Huh, twitchy, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's twitchy yeah. because they're, they're small. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so maneuverable. Yeah. Well, man, that's awesome. You got some nice stuff here, man. It's kind of messy right now in the garage. Yeah. I know you ought to see mine, you know. <laughs> Mine's real bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd like to get this running again. Because I just love the profile. Yeah. Right? They're so sleek. Yeah, they're... they're uh... well, I don't know if it'll keep up with traffic. You wouldn't want to ride it on the freeway. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> it's illegal for one thing. But um, but it would um, you could drive around traffic here and down. You know, I'm sure. Yeah, these bikes probably go 40, 50 miles an hour. 40 probably. Yeah. And I like what I like about the BMW is this right here. This Kickstarter's on the side. It is. It's, it's weird. It's and not, that's what I mean. Yeah. So you have to get off the bike. Yeah. Uh, to start it. Well, man, this is cool, man. Thanks a lot for showing me all this stuff, man. Sure, sure. Yeah, this is a... Um, we'll have to go riding sometime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take your... Uh, when you're on the... My 125. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, this is what we came to see. But, uh, but the other things are beautiful, too. You know, I know that probably some people will think that 
that BMW over there is a little more of an interesting topic, but to me, <laughs> this thing has some sentimental value to it. So, so why? It's the first motorcycle I ever rode. It's a Honda 160. It was the first first motorcycle I ever rode. And you never forget your first one, right? I never forgot it. <laughs> so, well. All right, Mike. Well, thank you, man. Thanks, Thanks a thank lot. Um, Thanks for, for coming over. You bet. I appreciate you spending the time, and we'll have to go mm -hmm. for a ride. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I really do uh, dig this thing, man. I mean, it's just the, the, the whole thing. It's just perfect, you know, the, mm -hmm. the red frame and all, this, all the, the minimalist in the space, the yes, minimalism yes. Of, the, yes. of the space. And the... Yeah. You know, just and you know it's easy to make it pristine yes as you can yes but at that point you're throwing money yeah. into something that yeah. you suddenly become too afraid to ride yep mm-hmm